And so I thought I would show how to, when having installed Adobe Photoshop PS Express app onto your iOS device, be it iPhone or iPad, uh, you can see now I'm you I was just raising the actual camera roll. The Photos app in iOS has its own editing, and as you can see, if you want to add another app, you open that More section. Uh, I've just added Diptych, so I can, from the camera roll, I can now open an image within Photoshop, which I do, and you can see I've got filters, have different tools here. As you can see, I can go from cropping various different shapes and ratios, in this case square, and I can use the exposure, and then I use the shadows, there's blackness, whiteness, then I go on to the clarity, you have dehaze, you have vignette, which can be black or white. As you can see, I can pinch to zoom in to see the details of what I'm editing. In this case, it's the vignette, which is white. And as you can see, pinch to zoom can also uh, increase or decrease the point of focus or the width of the vignette to be dark or light. You'll notice I'm using the blue slider to slide left or right to make the vignette dark or light. That is decrease or increase in all tools. And you can see I save and go back into the camera roll and have saved on top of the original image now. I then slide right and choose the next image. Within the camera roll, I click on the top right edit which then opens the camera roll's built-in edit function and click on the crop tool, which shows you have various different sizes which you can crop to, in this time square, which is what I use for my product images. Now here's the bug. Having used the crop tool in the camera roll app in iOS, you see I raise the menu with the Photoshop editing tool, which I don't use. Now currently in iOS 12.3, I think it is, there's a reason I don't use this, which I shall explain in a moment. While still in the iOS built-in Photos app uh, editor, I click on the lighting tool and open it, and we see it has light, color, and black and white. On the light tool, it has the following effects you can edit. Brilliance, exposure, shadows, highlights, brightness, and contrast. And last but not least, black point. In this case, I choose exposure because what I want is a white background which will lighten the image too, and I shall have to use contrast tools and clarity tools to bring the image back into focus. You can see here in the iOS Photos editing app built into the camera roll that if I make a mistake, I can revert to the original image and cancel. At this moment, I would say if you had used the crop tool in the iOS Photos app editing, built-in editing tool, do not yet open the Photoshop PSX, PS Express app from within the camera roll, because the crop tool will cause a bug to occur when you save the image. This means after editing using the editing app within the iOS camera roll app, Photos app, always save the photo first by pressing done and then open the photo again by pressing edit and choose the Photoshop PSS, sorry, the Photoshop PS Express app to further edit the image with. This will avoid the bug from occurring. 
So before we use PS Express, I'd just like to show some of the many features that are actually integrally contained within the Photos app, which you can see I'm using the Photos app, not using any external apps to do some editing with. And I'm going to use the markup um, feature, which actually I'm still learning about, but with every update is getting a little bit better. For example, they've now put arrow uh, objects, various symbolic objects in there which you can edit and move around and magnifications. So we can pinch to zoom now and use the magnification tool as you can see over the fire eye, the third eye of Pogerus E and I can magnify a certain area uh, this is not the Photoshop tool, this is the built-in iOS uh, markup app within the photos app on the camera roll or whatever photo album you're in, in the photos app so I could draw on it as well which I've forgotten how to delete but you can delete it too it's pretty basic but it's okay for explaining things and sending something online or WhatsApp or whatever to explain something or make an order or point something out or highlight an area with the magnifying tool like this. It's quite interesting to use the magnifying tool. So what I'm doing now is I am looking in the shared dialogues but you see the photoshop express ps express was gray not blue that means i'm taking it from the cloud it might be from onedrive or icloud or dropbox and it was downloading it to import it into photoshop first from the cloud in this case i was actually pulling it from um, the pictures folder of another windows computer on my Asus from my Lenovo Yoga. And now I'm using different filters in Photoshop PS Express. Or oh, I think they'll, you also have filters inside the Photos app. So you can, you have a choice between those two filters. And the crop tool. You will see the crop tool has different tabs and I'm now using the skew as well as the different crop uh, ratios. I'm also using the skew tool which uh, turns the thing around and gives 3D perspective effects. And once again, just to reiterate, we're back into the Photos app and I open the Share dialog. And you notice that the Photoshop PS Express icon is grey again. Because the photo I am looking at, the unedited one, is in the cloud. And so it's importing it into Photoshop. If it's on your camera roll, it just opens straight away. It's a different process. Either way, you can save it to camera roll. Mm. And there's a plethora of different tools and constantly new filters and tools. And uh, you can make collages as well with uh, the PS Express app and share it to various social networks. And there are also paid filters and paid add-ons, of course which of course is why they're always popping this thing up to try to get you to join Adobe Photoshop CC, which uh, I did join using Yopmail, which is an imaginary email to stop you getting spam and you can re reopen it and reuse it and throw it away to sign up. Um, but otherwise they send you all this marketing mail from Adobe and they try to get you to pay subscriptions and use their cloud services and you don't need to do it because this app is basically you don't need to do it for anything except editing your photos and you can share them to your networks or share a safety camera roll and put them to your computer 
and uh, there you go. And so now just to look at the collage feature, which I don't use because I use an app called Diptych, which serves my purposes, but actually uh, this collage feature is also very nice. I've used it sometimes and it has some very nice effects, which you can see, which I'm just tapping on to give some examples. And as you can see now, this is the Diptych app, which I open and it has very many templates of inserting multiple photos within one square. You can actually change to not square as well with paid versions, but uh, most of them are, are square and you see there's some round ones and different shaped ones. I usually use four in one because it allows me to show four sides of a product or an amulet or anything I want to show. So we'll just choose four. You can choose single or multi. So I'm because I'm doing four of one, I'm choosing multi in four at a time. And as you can see, I can edit the light in each one to brighten them. And there are other tools such as the border tools and the frame tools. And there's a text tool and so on, which you can watch me just mess around with a little bit here, which I don't really use because once I've set up my template, it remembers it and I just use the recents tab to reopen and change the pictures and keep the same format for all so that I have a uniform effect. But here's just a quick look at some of the different features within the Diptych app which also has a video version where you can put multiple videos inside one frame and run them at different speeds and times but that's for another day and another demo so you can just see a little demonstration now of the vignette tool how the slider can turn it dark or light and of course if you notice i can pinch my fingers to increase or decrease the level of focus of the vignette within the image so now we just switch back into the main camera app and i'll show you some of the generic tools which you can see we have three we have lighting color and black and white each of which expands to have different tools within such as clarity brightness you also have these filters here you also have a crop tool within the um, generic photos app which isn't bad but as you can see I'm still not satisfied I see a grey background uh, so I'm continuing to edit it and we'll open it in Photoshop and use some lighting effects there to try and remove the background, spice it up a bit, and can also use the lighting, the exposure within the camera app tools to fix it. And there you go, it's fixed. White background. So we're going to take a look at the collage feature now within Adobe PS Express after I've shown you Diptych. Here is the collage feature of Adobe PS Express which has a lot more than I show you here because um, they just updated and I'm just tapping around showing you tipping on all the options so you can see so you can see you have also sharing options and you can choose your album if it's from Dropbox or if it's from OneDrive or if it's from the camera roll or your iCloud or any of your other albums or your G Drive. So I've selected these now. It's automatically put them within one of the templates I chose. You have many different templates and effects you can give you have border effects you have 3d effects projected shadows 
As you can see, I can tap on each individual image or double tap the whole collage to on one of the areas I want to edit and edit that image and double tap again when I want to go back in to see the full image. And as you can see, you can open the share dialog and share to Facebook or to camera roll. You see what I'm sliding? I'm not sure what that is, but I think that's different kinds of themes. I haven't tried that yet. And uh, that's how to save a collage to your camera roll. I usually save it to camera roll and share it manually in my own way rather than doing it through the app because the app itself will then make a folder, for example, on Facebook called PS Express and it will share your photos to an album called PS Express and it will tag all of your photos with a hashtag saying PS Express and advertise itself which is fair enough for a free app like this but um, I just don't like doing that I don't like letting people use me as a marketing portal without paying me and uh, so I prefer to do it manually now here's one thing and also a message to Adobe something I and nobody likes is that you can see this pop up here do you like this app and you can see a big blue button very visible calling you to action to review the app in the app store and if you look on the very top left of the screen you will see a tiny little X button which is deliberately made in grey dark grey against black so you can't see it and most people can't figure out how to get out of that pop-up without writing a review and I'm usually too lazy to protest against that but sometimes when apps do that I do click and write a review and I write precisely what I just said that there are a bunch of I'm not going to say because this is a monetizable video and if I said the word I wanted to say it wouldn't be monetizable so that was just a little bit about uh, a few of the many features of collage making in Adobe PS Express. Let's now have a look at the filters, which aren't very um, highly varied, but for most people, Instagrammers and God knows what, I suppose it's okay. I try to make a realistic uh, color for, I take photographs of things that I sell, which means in, in the world of commerce, you call those products. I don't call what I sell products because they're sacred amulets and it's not polite to call them products. So I don't use filters. Very rarely use filters. I use them for video. Uh, sometimes in iMovie they have the same filters as the camera has and similar filters to these here we have text overlays which has various templates which you can uh, pinch and zoom you can change the font you can change the color it's pretty simple there are other apps which allow uh, better text overlays. Same as iMovie, they've got the same old half dozen text effects and that's it. And uh, I think that's something that Apple should work on uh, as well in iMovie is their text overlays. And uh, the text overlays in Photoshop, they're getting ever more. I mean, this PS Express app started off, you see here, this is a, what would you call it, a sticker. Started off with very few features and now it's got collage, it's got stickers, it's got text overlays, dehazing, anti-red eye. And they're trying to make it a powerful app. 
because they realized that there were lots of other apps around which were much, much more powerful, like Procreate, which beats the ass out of even the desktop version of Photoshop. So from here we can see the crop tools and then below that we can see uh, layers, the collage templates, a drawing tool, the filters tool, uh, a text insertion tool with various templates and uh, stickers. So um, that's Adobe Photoshop PS Express in combination with the camera roll. So opening photos within the camera roll and editing them using the generic inbuilt camera roll tools, editing tools and using external apps, opening the photo in the app from the camera roll, not from the app. If you open PS Express and then open a photo, you don't lose the original image. But if you open it from within the camera roll, when you save it, then you lose the original image, which I like because I got sick of deleting double content but it depends on your purposes and your work. Some people want to keep the original image and make various versions. And I do that sometimes if I want to keep the original image, I'll open Photoshop PS Express first and then save to camera roll. Which means of course that I start from the home screen like this and tap on PS Express and open the app and then choose whether I want to make editing a single image or I want to make a collage. At first here I decide to choose a single image but we can see once I have done on the toolbars on the bottom left of the screen you can see uh, looks like a multiple layer thing which you click and you can turn the single image into a collage afterwards even if you have selected a single image to edit so actually it doesn't matter and as you can see i'm showing you different collages using a single image and uh, so we could add some more images there is a tool which you will see me use during the sequence as i just click on everything randomly and just show you the random effects instead of boringly explaining each different tool, which on a long podcast like this would make it so long that you'd spend half the day watching it. So I'll just show you basically the th what you can do, but you can find out yourself how to do it by playing with it yourself. So you see I did an image, now it's split in two. I can then split the templates and turn the collage into different forms, which I assume in diptych you can grab the borders and stretch them so how much uh, of a collage a particular section occupies of the whole image can be edited uh, i'm not sure if that can be done here but i assume so yes it can i think you would tap on each image and just stretch it and twist it but i haven't tried that yet but anyway, yeah, that's uh, one of the tools you can use within this app, which keeps getting more and more features added to it. I wouldn't say it could take the place of Procreate. It's a different thing. Procreate is for artists drawing. This has no functionality to let you open a new screen and draw. They did have Adobe Photoshop Touch for 8 or $10, which I bought and they discontinued and never answered me what they were going to do about the money they took off me for some an app that they deleted from the App Store later. But anyway, that's why I don't buy apps from Adobe. I only take the free apps. Or, as you know, Johnny Depp was in a film about pirates and he used to park his boat in a bay so uh, you know where pirates park their boats when they want some treasure or they want to get or hide their treasure so that's also another place where you might find adobe that's all i'll say to that but uh their pricing 
for me it's only free apps and this app is fantastic for the uses I use it for but uh, it's not a drawing app like a desktop Photoshop and it doesn't replace it but as you can see it's so, so many ways of sharing you can put your edits into so many places and import them into other apps like uh, Typorama to add different texts because the Photoshop text tool has quite a limited and Photoshop also I haven't seen right now in this interface but usually it will have filters and tools which are locked and which you can pay more money to upgrade so it's a free app that has been offering filters and things you don't really need uh, as upgrades so you could actually spend a lot of money on this now here you can see I've put a sticker on top of the collage uh, which you can twist or you can resize and I think you can mask it as well I'm not sure you can in the diptych app I think you can probably mask it and uh, of course it looks stupid but the point is to just show your features what you make with it is up to your imagination skill and good taste this is really bad taste and it's not meant to be good taste because I'm not trying to make anything I'm trying to tap and show you the interface and now a little bit of chaotic messing about where even I don't know what I'm doing just tapping on things and finding out what tools there are including the different colors in the color palette and seeing what can be done <clears throat> because with every update there's something new with this app and it's free and it's very much worth it and you can send the photos to OneDrive and pick them up on your PC or send them to iCloud and pick them up on your MacBook or on your um, iPhone and or your Android device to G Drive and so on because there are a lot of sharing options. Being a free app and doing what all apps do, before we get to share it, we might just get this pop-up sometimes, asking us to enable notifications, just like Facebook does and almost every other app does. And the reasons for that is something for another very long podcast and screencast to explain to you about big data, data crunching and analytics and why they want us to be notified and why they want to call us to action to return to their site and create content. But to get back to the good things we can show you the many features of copy to line keep to line one note polaris office mega explain everything explain they do diptych imovie itunes university ibooks messenger microsoft mega one note you can add all of these apps if they have you have them on your device and you can share from the Photoshop Adobe PS Express or save or copy to any of these or open in any of these apps. Polaris Office Note, Toon Camera to make a cartoon out of it, shortcuts, save in line, keep, PS Express, create a contact, create a watch face, copy, so if you had this collage in PS Express, you could airdrop it to a MacBook or another iOS device or an OS X. You could copy to iMovie, Line, OneDrive, iTunes University, Save in Line, Keep. You could open it in any of these apps or airdrop it to any of your Apple devices <clears throat> or a Mac by just tapping on the spiral image and uh, send this to any of those places 
as well as being able to send to social networks. And uh, going back into the Photoshop PS Express app, you can use the effects tab to access the clarity, dehaze, and vignette tools, which you use the blue slider with to calibrate the effect. And as you can see, as I switch tools, you can see the blue slider moving left and right, which is of course my finger sliding the tool to adjust and calibrate the variables of each tool, be it uh, brilliance or blacks or whites or shadows or uh, light or whatever. And here is where the more and filter buttons take you. And this is the filters library. So from the three tools of light, color and black and white, here is the lighting tool selection, which as you can see has brightness, contrast and so on which is very useful for basic editing just within the Photos app of iOS. You can see of the three tools within the camera app, I have the lighting tool library open, showing all the different tools in the lighting menu. Otherwise, to the left of that tool, the built-in tools of the Photos app for editing of course are filters and a simple but very useful crop tool which has about a dozen of the most used um, crop ratios and uh, to the right the small dotted menu is of course to open up the sharing menu or open in other apps menu